Now a video that I always plan to do at the end of this, but people have been asking for, so I thought better to do it sooner rather than later. So that's what this week's video is, and I'm gonna break down the costs of exactly what this engine cost me in the end. So this is the engine out of my VN that, if you don't know, spun a bearing uh, across the line at Heathcote. Uh, it's had a full freshen up with a lot of added goodies. Uh, this is my version of a cheap but going for reliability engine, like not going for big power or anything. To be honest, it's probably going to make the same power as it did before, maybe a little bit more just because it's fresh. Cam's a little bit smaller, so who knows what's going to happen on the dyno. I just want this thing to be reliable so I can thrash the absolute out of it and not have a problem. So here is my list that I'm going to break down for everyone. So all the parts, all the things I sold, and the end total. Now, it would be good if people put in the comments what they think this engine is going to cost before I break it all down. If you watch previous videos, you know what's in it, or you're just going to have to wait and I'll explain everything that's in it right now. So we'll start with this bottom end, all right? So the plan was me and my friend Daniel were going to build this engine ourselves. Uh, but we came to the decision to let the machinist assemble it just because, you know, if anything happens in the future on startup or anything like that, it's sort of all on the engine builder. It's not he's machined everything and we put it together. So who knows who stuffed up something there. So just insurance wise. And as I said previously, for a couple of hundred dollars, they charge just to assemble it and do all the clearances. You'd be silly not to. So for this bottom end, I'll explain what it is. So this is my original block out of the VN. So LS1, 346 cubes, whatever they are. I had to get another crank as my crank was too far gone. We did ARP rod bolts in the bottom. We went a 10th hour of a piston because my block had pitting in the bore and when he honed it, it was just too far gone. Had to um, machine it out a bit bigger, so I had to go an oversized piston. Uh, standard rods, you know, new cam bearings, bottom end bearings, main bearings, all that stuff. So I got back a full assembled bottom end Plus he checked and decked my heads. So the heads are all good. They didn't get rebuilt or anything. There was nothing wrong with them. You know, he just pressure tested them like crap. Everything all good there. So that bottom end assembled everything back to me, ready to go, was three, four, six, five, and 22 cents. Now, if you have everything already, and you're, you know, you've just got maybe an engine with low comp, maybe a bit of blow by. It's such a cheap option if you can, for three and a half grand, just get an engine built and just slam it back in there. It is very cheap considering the price of Alice ones these days. Now this engine was built by Horsepower Junkie, who's a local place here. A lot of workshops use them, All Sparks, PP. All these places use them for machining. It's really known for barras, but does a lot of LS stuff as well. So now on to all these little bits and pieces. Ah, actually, before I forget, now as I said, because this crank was too far gone, I needed to find either another engine or another crank or something like that. So I ended up finding, thanks Troy, my friend Troy uh, offered up to me, he had a complete bottom end, uh, LS1, apparently good condition, you know, when pulled from the car, 500 bucks. So I factored that in, that I had to buy another LS1 for $500. Now, it actually didn't owe me $500 at the end, but we will get to that with the things that I sold because we ended up just using a couple of the rods and the crank out of that engine. Now onto the little bits and pieces I bought along the way. The oil pickup brace was $39. And also the barbell that goes in the oil gallery was $35. Thanks to VCM shopvcmstore.com.au The Mace Trunnion upgrade in the Rockers was $185. I did the baffle setup in the sump which was $366. I did as many ARP bolts as I could. So did the balancer bolt which was $74.90. Bloody expensive for one bolt. This big mother effer here. Obviously we did head studs. I'm not sure if I mentioned that previously, but yeah, this has ARP head studs in it. So they were $590. Did ARP bolts on the cam gear and the cam retainer plate, which were 
and 2670. Did an upgraded Mallings oil pump, which was 224.90 cents. Uh, with rear mains on these, obviously, if you have an LS, you know they're very, very prone to leaking. So what is advised to do is just buy the whole plate with the rear main in it. Genuine from Holden. Just trust me, just buy genuine and you shouldn't ever have a problem. So that genuine from Holden was 129.50. We did the 25% underdrive uh, pulley setup. So which came with, you know, these, uh, if you're running aircon, it comes with the two idlers there, this one and the pulley itself, which is a very nice unit, I must say. So that setup was 429.95. I ended up buying a kit, I wanted genuine head gaskets. I was told to get genuine GM head gaskets. So I actually bought a kit online that was head gaskets, genuine LS7 lifters, and it came with some aftermarket head bolts, which I didn't use, which will get added at the end because I sold those. Oh, and it came with genuine uh, lifter trays as well as I needed those. So it was good to buy all that kit together, which was $430. Did an Aer Aeroflow bottom end gasket kit. So pretty much everything from heads down gasket wise, which was $90.40. I ended up replacing the cam retainer plate as that has a little seal inside it, which, you know, it never goes, but for what this thing costs, you'd be silly, very, very silly not to replace it when you have an engine apart. So that cam retainer plate was 37.80. One of my lifter tray bolts was a bit hairy when we were pulling it out. So I decided to do all new lifter tray bolts with just the four small ones that hold the lifter trays. Uh, in the block, which were 31.45. Now, if you've watched previous videos, this engine did have a GM Motorsports turbo killer in it, which is a very, very large camshaft, but upon inspection, it had a little nick in one of the lobes, so I uh, decided not to use it, which uh, Sam from VCM came to the rescue. Shopvcmstore.com.au. Um, and he supplied me a VCM 710 for two hundred and fifty dollars which was a very very good hookup with price hope he doesn't mind me mentioning what he gave it to me for the valley gasket for obviously the valley down the center under the intake manifold which i bought genuine holden was 44.61 and rock cover gasket kit was 25.99 so this is all the little bits and pieces that i put together to make it reliable now, a few people have, uh, have mentioned, you know, it's such a good idea doing all these little things. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to link in at the bottom of this video in the description where I got all this information. If you watch Taylor Ray, he actually did an exact same video where he just wanted a reliable LS and I pretty much bought everything that he did and copied his exact setup so that it's hopefully reliable. We'll see once this thing's running, but... So after all that, including a fully assembled bottom end with all these little things that I did, that came to $6,999.32. So as you can see, when the engine bottom end cost three and a half and our total ended up at seven grand, all these little bits and pieces add up very quickly and doubled my total very, very fast. So, you know, don't expect to build an engine for very, very cheap. And this is very basic, yeah? So think if you added, you know, rods and pistons or you added a stroke of crank or you added heads, that's just thousands and thousands of dollars on top. So these engines can blow out very, very quickly. I didn't think I was gonna spend this much, but you know, that's what happens. Now onto things I sold. Now that other LS1 that I got, I ended up selling uh, all the leftover pistons, uh, even the ones out of this engine as, as I said, we replaced them all with 10th hour over pistons. So I had 16 pistons. Uh, we used the best eight rods. So I had another eight rods, uh, the stuffed crank and the other block, which uh, Grim Industries, I'll also link him down below. He does coffee tables and stuff like that out of them. So it's good that it went to a good home. So someone around the world somewhere is gonna have my old engine as a coffee table in the house or something like that. So I sold all that for $200 to him. I sold the head bolts. Now, if you remember, this kit I bought came with uh, standard style head bolts. Now this, we already did ARP bolts, so I sold those out of the kit for 50 bucks to someone. 
and I also sold the old camshaft and lifters. I'm hoping it does well. I explained what was wrong with it. Someone is still game to use it. It'll probably be fine, but you know, I sold it super cheap just you know, just to get it out of my life, recoup some money. So that's gone to someone else as well, which I sold for a hundred dollars. So we got back a total of 350, which if you take it off the 7,000, came it down to total with all of this stuff, bottom end assembled, fully done, ready to drop back in the car. Ended up coming to 6,649 and 32 cents. So in the end, not that bad. Now I'm gonna insert here, I screenshot this just in this example, which I'll post right here right now. This is what a standard, you know, sort of unknown LS1 is going for these days. Now, even if you buy this engine for three and a half thousand dollars, now keep in mind this sold in under 24 hours, so it was gone like that. Even if I bought something like that, I would still wanna do half of this stuff anyway. So, you know, you're gonna do, you know, a couple of the ARP bolt stuff, uh, you know, the trunnions, you're gonna do a cam, lifters, all that stuff again. So add, you know, if you pay three and a half for an unknown stock LS1 these days, add 1,500, two grand in bolt-ons you're gonna do anyway. No one's gonna throw just a standard engine in. So, you know, I got out of this pretty good for this amount. Now I have done very similar videos to this where I broke down the cost of the VN when I first got it and uh, what I'd spent on it so far. And I did the same thing on my Evo as well. Now, when I did those videos, I factored in the money that I'd made from these YouTube videos that I'd done on the cars and taken that off the price as well. I won't do that with this because, one, there's only been like three or four videos uh, on doing this engine, so say, I don't know, maybe five, six hundred dollars, and it's not really relevant to anyone else who's trying to compare what they've built their engine to, to mine, unless they have a YouTube channel as well. So, I've left that one out for this video. Hopefully this clears a few things up to people and hopefully it can encourage people to sort of, you know, buy insurance stuff like that to keep their engines alive for as long as they possibly can. If you have any questions on where I got any of these parts, uh, you know, throw it in the comments and I will happily link you to exactly where I got it. Actually, most of this stuff, which I wish I did in the first place, I didn't even know. I'm gonna say 99% of this stuff is available from VCM vcmstore.com.au So I'm sure if you call VCM and do a massive order like that, they'll probably help you out, who knows? So you might even get out of it cheaper than I did because I ended up buying stuff from here, there and everywhere and when I should have just gone to VCM from the start. But anyway, I didn't know Sam then, so that's all right. Now, as I said previously, the engine probably won't go back in for a while. I still need to build the box and I want to put it all in together from underneath with the K-frame. So next week's video, if you know what this is, you know shit's about to get serious cleaning wise. So I think I'm gonna try and drop the roof lining out of this as it is filthy when I went over it with a rag. Maybe leave it in and do it with the wet vac. I don't know, I'm gonna get water everywhere. I'd rather pull it out, but who knows? It's gonna be raining here in Melbourne, so I don't know if it's the right weather for it, but we'll see how we go. Now just to finish this one off, wood, people be interested in channel merch. I'm talking jump, uh, probably not jumpers because winter's almost over, probably t-shirts. Now, if you're watching this to the end, you're probably one of the people that might buy merch because you're that interested in the videos, but it probably wouldn't be car related. It would just be the channel as a brand on its own. And I can probably say now they won't be cheap because I would probably rather quality over quantity, so. It's just an idea, a little side project, as well as this channel. Let me know in the comments if you're the sort of person that would buy merch from this channel. And maybe I can get the ball rolling on something like that. Anyway, see what happens. That was a lot of talking. See you guys next week.